excuse myself, I am Abhilash. I actually take care of the products and take care of the solutions in Mulio software testing. So I'm going to talk about you know, the app performance. I think as the, as the name suggests, we are going to look a slightly deeper into how, how we can test what are the ways um, in which the app performance can be looked into and uh, what's the psychology behind it and why is it important for anybody to look for app performance. The way we looked at, uh, we, we look at the app performance is, um, you know, how something uh, is loading quickly. So the fact that, you know, most of the um, uh, places where we look at performance and the way we perceive performance is the fact that, you know, when we open something, probably a website or a mobile app, we we'll see how quickly you can load um, and how fast you can get the job done. Um, and also having been um, in mobile, uh, you know, app testing space is the fact that people are always looking at optimizing uh, the app performance on 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 different levels, starting from how easy it is to, you know, do something to uh, uh, submit a uh, reports or um, you know submit a form or etc. So the way we look at mobile apps is the fact that mobile app is a small device uh, as in it's a, it's a device with a minimal space to click, unlike the web part of it where you have a bigger screen, you have a lot more uh, area and then you can show a lot more things, but then uh, mobile apps are always about minimalism and how quickly you can get things done with very least amount of clicks. Um, that's what the mobile apps is all about. And in the, in the past also in, on a day-to-day -day basis, I've seen a lot of mobile apps being complex uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, which also includes, you know, it takes a lot of time for us to click and do something, or it takes a lot of time for us to, you know, uh, even load certain images or probably when we're playing games, it tags are very different. That's the reason it's important for us to see mobile app performance differently is the fact that we look at how the users are uh, perceiving this performance itself. For you, you might have optimized the code as much as possible uh, but then it's, it's left to the more, it's the user who actually feels and uses the application. So it depends on various aspects like which network is it connected to, which, uh, uh, which mobile, what's the RAM size of its phone and what state of the mobile it is in, is it in battery saving mode, etc, etc. To know whether it's, the app is performing well or not. Moving on, I'm going to talk about a little bit of uh, the psychology behind the performance. Is the fact that there's a there's a lot of uh, uh, studies on how users um, perceive the performance and what is their tolerance level of having to stay in a specific place for quite some time. So that includes, you know, um, where they say is three seconds. Three seconds is something that for sure the users are going to abandon. So this is about 80% of the users who are who don't have that tolerance level of having to see that three seconds pause. And I hope you guys have often, you know, uh, closed or killed the application and reopened it because something is not loading, especially if I have to give you a recent example is uh, the app like Ola, um, where you try to open it after quite some time because it's been in the background, you've been, you know, at home, you have not been using cabs. So you try to open the application now, it's just, uh, it just stays in the launch screen for quite some time. So, so anything that's that's three seconds is something that user would say I'm going to abandon this particular um, app uh, or probably restart it or find a new uh, new app that's something similar to this um, or something like that. So the reason why we say that this is important is the fact that whenever we are talking to someone, the average response time is either a second or two. Um, and since you are physically seeing someone, you can expect some response to that. But unlike the mobile applications or any applications for that matter, we don't see anything. All we expect to see is when I click something, something has to show up and it has to show up as, as soon as possible. So that's the, that's the idea behind it. This is more of how people actually perceive the load times that includes people between the time of 0 0.1 to which is 100 milliseconds to 400 milliseconds, people don't notice anything changing in the application or how they see because the 400 milliseconds is the time for us, for our brain brains to process certain things saying something is loading up or it is very quick. It is not something that we can see for quite some time. 
um, and the time between the 500 millisecond and the second is also a good number, which is people are ready, people, people tolerate this particular time. Uh, it's okay for them to, you know, wait for this one second. And that's the reason there's always the buffer of one second is all right, and then but three seconds is not great. Um, three seconds is quite some time uh, for them to do anything. Um, and then between two to five seconds is where, you know, people start to concentrate because they start to notice that there is a visible wait for me to do, but then people can make it enjoyable. So for example, if you're using certain applications, for, uh, if you're using CRED, for example, CRED has a lot of animations in place. It actually takes more than 500 milliseconds to one second to finish any of that. But then you don't notice this is because of the fact that they have tried to cramp in as much animation as possible for you to make it more pleasurable than being annoying. So there are certain apps which are simply annoying. They just open the screen and then nothing works out. Best example for you guys is if you guys are using a, a application called Z5. Um, um, so there is there's an option for you to connect to a TV or probably cast it to a TV. You open that particular uh, uh, you know feature. It takes about 10 to 12 seconds for you to wait. So uh, you have to either reload it or you have to wait go and sit next to the Wi-Fi to make sure it's working. Uh, it, it has never worked positively over the past of based on my experience. And that's when the annoying kicks in, uh, even for the users for them to. That's when we say that for mobile apps, it's always good to have between a time of one to three seconds as a potential load time, but then you can compensate that by giving necessary animations and things like that. Um, and then that's when the five to 10 seconds and so on kicks in where people are not at all interested with doing anything anymore with the applications. They just want to go out of the application um, and say, let me find a new one or try doing something else with the application or probably you get a WhatsApp message so you're easily diverted. So you're no more ready to install the applications. So um, and that's, the, that's the idea behind it. So going forward, uh, the reason why you know uh, it becomes very, very important is the fact it's also the fact that there is a lot more things for us to focus on. So there are mobile apps, mobile apps have Android, iOS, there are hybrid versions, the respon responsive uh, you know, version of the application, then there is React. So there are web apps and the web apps has a different tech stack and then server side. So they all work together to deliver something that we are doing today. So when you are talking about mobile app performance, it's not just the mobile app performance that you are looking at, but then you're also looking at what are the other components that are serving this for this experience that we are looking at? You have done, if you have built a great app, but then your server side is not optimized, then your app is going to look as crappy as the one which was, um, you know, regardless of how beautiful you have designed. Uh, so it's all a combination of things working together to be able to deliver some experience. And then for us, it's important that we look at different aspects, but given the fact that you know, we are going to see the app performance as majority of the time. Um, and then that's what user sees and that's where we need to emphasize more. The reason why people are not able to focus more on the app performance is something that we we'll look at later in the session, but then these are the coverage and this is what we need to look at into as a performance as a holistic view, not just looking at the app performance. It's sometimes with respect to how your server is loading images and what is the load that is taking up um, and then how are you going to manage the load balancing um, and how is the API optimized? Are you looking at having a lot more JavaScripts in place? So if you're having a lot more JavaScripts, there is potentially a load time, which is definitely going to be higher than what you estimated because of JavaScripts itself as uh, its own uh, load time problems. Um, and that's how it works. Uh, but think of a holistic view of how the how the entire application is serving and what are the additional components that are serving certain things. Moving on to how the, the adoption of the mobile app has been. So this is just the background of how the mobile apps have grown over the over the years. So even today, after you know this lockdown that we have been in, we are spending 50% more time on mobile than um, anybody else. I'm pretty sure you guys have been playing Ludo. Uh, on a day to day basis with your friends, probably the, each Ludo takes about 20 to 20 minutes of your game time, which is, which is everybody in the game are spending so much time in the 
phone and it's not just with your friends you play with your colleagues you play, play with your family so look at how it has changed over the past and then how we are today in terms of the mobile usage so the as an entire world is now 60% mobile uh, usage which means people are the 60% looks very small but then when we are looking at places where there are no mobile phones or there are no technology evolved with still a good percentage given the fact that we are in a place where we have access to a lot more things uh, but then if you're looking at people who have been using facebook uh, there's about 95 percent of mobile users people don't go off into web version of it there are certain people the five percent includes the people who are uh, business users who are putting out ads and they're managing a lot of things and there are about two, two, 205.4 billion uh, apps that has been downloaded um, in the in the past year um, which is about which is a very good number given the fact that we are talking about ios android and the growth of uh, you know the mobile industry as well so even today your phones are occupied to have or you can install more than you know 200 apps at the time so i have about 240 apps uh, in my phone and i try to uninstall reinstall new apps keeps trying keep trying something to be able to uh, gain a lot more understanding of how apps behave um, and uh, if you look at the indian market itself uh, india india have actually sold about 28.5 uh, billion actually i didn't write that so it's 28.5 billion worth devices that are being sold in india uh, which is a huge number compared to the previous year which was about 12.2 billion which is is more than 50 percent increase uh, um, in the, the usage uh, in the mobile uh, industry in india itself everybody has uh, apps right now so even today we are tackling the entire epidemic with mobile apps not with uh, you know other um, uh, hardwares or softwares that we are talking about um, and then we are also looking at some, some places like china who have been completely into mobile phones there are about 95 percent uh, of their traffic coming through the mobile itself be it apps they're ordering food they're doing something everything is on the uh, on the mobile phones and then the reason why i'm sharing this is the fact that we are moving towards that we are actually uh, starting to adopt them people more and more people are getting buying phones more and more people are using apps and that's when it becomes challenging for any companies to optimize their mobile app to work on these many number of devices that are out there so i'm going to talk a little bit of about why people uninstall applications it's just a word cloud that i created so you can see that there are more of a performance aspect than everything else so you're talking about um, you know uh, errors battery ding crashes um, there is also freezes and uh, uh, takes too long to load and there are some trust issues and there are some you know expectation that you have and that doesn't sound this is based on uh, how people have uh, uninstalled the application in the past and why they have uninstalled the application. So most of the things have moved towards, you know, tolerance level has been increasing. For, if you're using Zoom in your mobile, for example, it consumes a lot of battery, but you are still using it of the fact that everything happens in Zoom. Here I have listed down uh, the most common issues because of that performance. Uh, um, uh, the performance is impacting the most which is the crashes which i think is very straightforward when it comes to crashes is when you're not able to use anything at all you just uh, the app just starts uh, shuts down and then you have to reopen it and start doing it once again um, and where it's more um, leading to uninstalls is the fact that when you're trying to enter some details and then you have to leave the application or the app crashes uh, you have to re-enter the entire form again and then you're not anymore in a, in a position to go back and start to uh, you know enter the fields one second um, and then basically people are losing the users there so we're talking about cpu usage which is also proportional to how much battery is being drained by more of how much cpu is being utilized in by your application because every time your cpu is being used there are multiple components that are being used at the same time including the gpus and the hardware everything that are present in it for example if you're just opening your screen every time there is a screen that's lighting up which is all the time whenever you try to open the screen so this cpu and other things that's always on so your screen your screen is powered by uh, 
CPU. Your any actions that you do is powered by CPU. Uh, your hardwares are powered by CPU. So everything um, you know leads to CPU. And if you to give you an example of where the CPU is visibly making a difference is when you are uh, using maps, for example, because it is using GPS, it is using screen, it is using the um, the live location, it is using uh, you know possibly everything that is for you to enable with you uh, you with the navigation. And that's when you tr you had to plug in your charger and start looking at the maps and, and it starts to drain out quickly. Uh, and that's when every application that uses maps drain more battery uh, than every other apps that's on the uh, market out there, including the the ones that I didn't mention are the video streaming apps, which are uh, but but uh, we are used to it. We actually connect them to the charger and start using. It. So that's the way behind the CPU usage. And then the transactional failures. This is not. This is always something to do with the performance of the application. So. If you look, if you take, for example, the app like Flipkart or app like PhonePay, so they have apps inside the application. So till you get to the uh, uh, cart page, everything is native. So the moment you get to the cart page, it becomes in hybrid, which means everything that is being loaded is be being pushed from the service. So you are actually loading it newly every time, and then you're waiting for some time, and then you try to uh, send another request or you try to make a payment or uh, because there's an API that's already been fired, there is higher chances that your transaction gets paid. And the same with many applications on the market out there. And then we are talking about the errors. Uh, most of the time you don't know what's happening with the application at all. It just throws some, uh, some error um, and I have no idea about it. Uh, Somebody is trying to draw on the screen, um, which is all right. <laughs> so um, and then um, we're looking at slowness um, of the application, which is which is something that I've already added. There's a difference between the loading and the slowness. The slowness is app is uh, actually slowing uh, of different screens, and the loading is something you are waiting for the response to happen. The slowness is, for example, if you're using the government apps like Umang, uh, every time you try to open something inside the app, there's always the entire app is slow by default. Uh, it tries to load. There is always a frame drops that are happening. Everything is, um, you know, slow in the application. Uh, and then we are talking about back, background heavy. So if if you if you are running too many, um, uh, you know, calls or uh, and you're putting putting a lot of uh, uh, batches in the background, so that's when we there is a lot of background. Um, tasks that are happening, which tends to drain your battery. For example, if you charge your phone uh, overnight and then leave it because there are a lot of apps that are running in the background, you can go to um, you know settings in the uh, in the device and check which are the apps that have been running in the background for quite some time. For example, if you're using WhatsApp, it actually takes a backup overnight, so it has to wake up. It takes some battery and then leaves it. And there are sort of some news application which actually refreshes. And if you're using Make My Trip, it, they keep sending uh, back to back um, you know, notifications. It's because Android is allowing them to be a background task, but it's been optimized right now, but it, this is still a problem that people are um, you know, facing over the, with respect to the app performance. So uh, let's, let's just look into the, let's start addressing this problem, right? So uh, it's important that you know, we have heard that performance is important, performance is important. Uh, but then we need to see how, how much importance that we are giving to the performance and what are we doing about it uh, when we are testing the application itself. So um, these are the reasons and these are the things that you need to monitor for performance. Uh, if you're looking at, at performance, you, you may not be aware of certain things um, in the screen, but then this is all is leading to the app performance issues, something like job schedulers, something like how the resource management is happening, the data completion algorithms, and what are the libraries that, are, that they are using. And uh, here is something that I've listed where we say talk about the crashes, the memory usage, um, and the API calls. These are basics for us to monitor the app performance uh, um, while we are testing. So um, you may ask, how, how do we actually you know, monitor all of this? It's very difficult for us to know 
what's happening with, uh, for example, the AP calls. We don't know what, what are the AP calls that are happening. That are happening. But you do have some things like some tools like Charles and Fiddler that you can intercept the calls between and look at what are the AP calls that are happening and how much time it is taking for the server to respond. Um, and then there's a, a Activity Lifecycle Manager. So this is something that you can't know, but then you can ask your developers to add some libraries for you to monitor all your app cycle, app life cycle, uh, you know, and where app uh, life cycle is important. It's there in both Android and iOS, but they do behave differently. We are talking about how, what is the activity that is being initiated? What is the activity that's being paused? How is it being resumed? Um, the one quick way to test this is to keep, uh, don't keep activities enabled in the developer options to check for the activity lifecycle and how it is behaving across different screens. Um, and then there are certain tools on the Play Store that you can download and validate as well. So, uh, and then there's launch time. There's launch time. There are multiple things in the launch. We are talking about warm and cold start and how it is launching, how much time it is taking. How, how often do you see the, uh, the launch screen itself? There is a this screen that shows up um, uh, that's called the loading screen and then it goes, goes to the splash screen to the main screen. So you look at how long it is taking for the splash screen to stay on the screen for some time and what is the time it is taking. So you can't put a, like a stopwatch and check how much it is taking, but then you have to do it technically to see how long, it, because it might take 700 milliseconds. It might take about two seconds. It might take about 300 milliseconds. Uh, but then you are looking at 700 milliseconds every time you are launching the application. Right? So that's adding up to some time. Um, and that's what you are talking about the launch uh, times. We are talking about RAM sizes, how it differs, how the app is responding to different RAM sizes and activities. Uh, and then background and foreground tasks. And if you're going in the background, so I hope you guys have seen a lot of videos being done on speed tests of the mobile phones, opening different applications, how much time it is taking and things like that. And then potentially you guys, if you've seen a comparison between, uh, you know, Xiaomi uh, K20 Pro or Poco phone, for example, versus uh, Apple phone. Um, Apple phone has less RAM than any other smartphones in the market right now, but then they are still able to open and launch applications faster than anybody, uh, any other smartphones that's in the market right now. So there is, a, there is a significant reason here why this is happening. So it's not just about the RAM, how much RAM that you have. For example, OnePlus has about 16 GB of RAM. So, but the app does, cannot take more than, for example, if the app is wanting to take 16 GB, it's not possible for them or it's not, they don't have that much code for them to access that 16 GB of memory. So they can maximum use about probably depends on the screen resolution if they are using OLED and it's a QHD display and then we're talking about graphics and everything it can maximum take up to uh, probably 2 GB if you're playing for example PUBG um, and you cannot go more than that you you're not allowed to Android and iOS uh, Apple kills the application if you're going beyond certain limit uh, because you have multiple resources to deal with it's not just the memory, it's also the CPU you are getting access to a lot of things. Uh, but then these are, the, these are the reasons why there is this difference even with a similar processor or probably powerful processor and still takes a lot of time to load. Uh, it's, it's, there are multiple reasons behind it. Uh, and then we are talking about scrolling, refresh, um, how much time it takes for, for anything to upload and download. And we are talking about frame drops, um, the responsiveness upgrades, um, uh, you, if you go to the Play Store and uh, look at some apps, people people keep saying that every up, upgrade is becoming worse uh, uh, because of the fact that you know you add a lot more things, but you don't really monitor the performance or you see the impact of performance across different devices across different um, you know phones out there in the market. So it's important uh, for you guys to sample. So what you can do is that if you're talking about app performance and monitoring app performances, you take Android versions from uh, five to 10 across different manufacturers, different screen size and resolutions and sample it. Uh, and then look at the difference between all of this to see which could reveal a lot more bugs with respect to their performance. Um, and that will give a lot of ideas. Uh, usually in Apple or uh, iOS, it's much more optimized except few apps 
because the experience is, uh, you know, the hardware and software is much more connected compared to um, Android. Uh, Android is open source, which means anybody can just, if you have a hardware or a phone, you can just optimize or, um, you know, modify the OS version and run it in your phone. Uh, the best example is, for example, the Oxygen OS by OnePlus. It's, it's, it's Android, but then they have modified it completely, optimized it, bring in new features, bring in new uh, performance aspect to also connect it to their hardware and they're doing some good job there. So that's where it makes a lot of difference. Um, and uh, the fact that the new phones are coming with 90 hertz display, 120 hertz display, um, it will become a lot more evident. So any performance problems will become a lot more evident because 120 hertz is basically the refresh rates. It's twice than 60 hertz that has been happening that we are seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. So the reason why we call it 60 FPS is because 60 frames per second. Uh, we are looking at uh, one frame being done at 16 milliseconds so that you don't see any difference visually. So that's the reason most of the TVs are 50 hertz and 60 hertz. And then the, the movies are taken at 24 FPS or 30 FPS. We see a quite a uh, you know, slowness with respect to how we see things. But then the recent phones that are coming out are 60 FPS, 60, 120, 90 hertz display, which is, which is going to be much more smoother uh, of transition, but then people are going to visibly see a lot of difference. Um, and that's going to add up to a lot more uninstalls in the coming days. Uh, since most of the people are still not able to afford that 90 hertz or 120 hertz display, they're still okay with the 60 hertz display. But then eventually they will get there. And that's when these things become much more important. Performance will take a hit. Uh, and these are the metrics that we need to monitor on a day to day basis while we are testing our applications. So moving on to uh, how do we how do we basically monitor? What are the tools that we can use? <coughs> Sorry for that. So uh, what are the tools that we can use to uh, monitor our performance um, across Android and iOS? Um, there's there are three. I actually divided them into three things, which is exploratory, automated, and monitoring piece of it. We're talking about exploratory being your developer options, which is the most handy tool out there in the market, which is every phone that you are using is having uh, developer options. And then you can utilize it maximum to see how the app is responding, how the app is behaving, is it crashing? From, for example, increase your display size, increase your font size, don't keep activities. And then you can also, you can also restrict how much RAM is being used. Uh, you can also uh, reduce the, um, screen refresh rate uh, or you can use one one phone to root it and try to um, you know increase the way in which you can use the developer options and there are apps like apk analyzer that will tell you how much what are your resources uh, in the application what are the image size that are being used just to give you an example in android there's something called nine patch images which is if you um, if you give a one high resolution image the nine patch image will uh, spit out uh, nine different kinds of images to support multiple screen resolutions. So, which means if you are, if you give uh, the nine patch a very low resolution image, and if you're looking at in phones like OnePlus or Samsung phones, it will look completely blurry. Uh, but then if you give a high resolution image, it will adapt to the kind of resolution that are, that are being uh, tested on. And then you can use Android Studio. Uh, Android Studio has a lot more feature, but then the problem with Android Studio is you can only uh, do it on only one device at a time. So you can't use multiple devices at the same time. And you might have to switch. And then you should also have the code base. You should also have a debug APK to monitor all of that, which you can also do. Um, pretty sure you can debug it, get the debug APK, resign it and start using it. Um, and then you also have Perfecti. So we actually have worked on a product called Perfecti, which talks about um, adding the SDK in your application, and then uh, which you can take from your developers to add the SDK. It monitors all these aspects of the performance and uh, gives you the report of how how the memory is being utilized, how much time it is taking for the screen to load, what are the frames that are dropping. Uh, with the logs and things like that to be able to give you a lot more insights of your app performance. And uh, if you really uh, want to monitor during uh, your testing time, so you can ask your developers to add it and start 
utilizing them as well. And then you can use Xcode for um, iOS, um, which is also a free tool that is part of Xcode. But then uh, you have to, again, something like you have to have a, have a debug version of the application and then start monitoring certain pieces of it. All, although iOS is something that is always more optimized than Android. So usually people don't uh, uh, bother too much optimizing on the iOS end except the crashes that are happening, uh, potentially the frame drops that are happening. Uh, we are talking about the automated as well. So when you're, if you're, if you're apps, if you're testing apps and then you're running your automation scripts, so, so you can use uh, these parts of it to be able to monitor um, the, the performance, including the perfect SDK. So you, if you add the SDK and run your automation scripts, you will be able to get a lot more performance details um, out there. Uh, and then you can also use test lab, which is Google test lab. Uh, but then you have to write scripts specifically in a, in espresso or something like that to be able to get the data out. Um, and then the AWS also has it, but then we are talking about very minimalistic uh, performance metrics like the memory usage, CPU usage, the network usage and things like that, not more than that. Uh, but that's also uh, very important and we get a lot more insights of what's happening with the app over the course. Um, on the, also the monitoring part of it, the monitoring is basically when you go to the Play Store uh, or the App Store. So you want to monitor what's happening with the users. So there's a Firebase SDK, which is for both Android and iOS. And then there is Android Vitals, which is for Android apps, which uh, developers will get access to. And you can also see what are the things that are happening with respect to your applications. Uh, so again, uh, we are looking at what exactly uh, is the problem that even with all the tools that we, we have, with all the tools that we provide, we have access to, uh, the real problem comes down to, you know, what's happening in the Play Store or the App Store, for example. People keep saying, hey, something is failing. Hey, something is not working. It keeps crashing. I try to do something. Um, and the app is not loading at all. It keeps crashing. It takes so much time to open. If you see the first one, it says, worst app forever. It takes time to open. Uh, the real reason behind this is that we always see performance as not being part of, uh, uh, you know, from the very initial stage of the development life cycle. So we're talking about um, design time. I'm not talking about the UI UX part of it, but then we're talking about the architectural design, how your app is going to be developed. What are the resources that you're going to use? How do you choose what tech to work on? How is your app? Uh, going to be built, and etc. So from there too, we are talking about how the developers are going to optimize their screens, uh, the views that they are using, uh, how, how are they going to optimize uh, the loading part of it and what kind of technology that they are going to use. And as testers, we are always focused towards the function part of it. We, we hardly think about performance when we are testing application because there's always pressure of wanting to get the app out to the Play Store or App Store and there's always um, something that is blocking us from doing this. But then you can have certain tools as part of a checklist and have that running every time or uh, every time there's a release that's happening. So right now what we are doing is we are monitoring every performance aspects on in life. So if you see people use, you might have heard people using Crashlytics, you might have heard people using uh, test, um, the Google Cloud, um, Google Test Lab, and, Firebase and Android Vitals and etc. Why are we always focusing on pushing, um, you know, our performance monitoring aspect to whatever the users are telling? The reason why we, why this is showing up is because of the fact that we are pushing everything to the uh, live. We are not doing anything before the, the before the live, uh, which includes the dev, the test, and design part of it. So. I would say the better way to uh, you know solve this problem is uh, we have to identify the uh, issues during this time. So, like like I mentioned, during the design phase, you have to optimize how how are you going to use your resources, what kind of images that are being shown, how are you going to uh, uh, because the the higher the resolution of the image, the bigger the size of the application, you are uh, very much prone to uninstallation than. Uh, apps that are very small. So there is this rule called uh, 10MB rule. Uh, there are many companies following the 10MB rule. 
So where if the app size increases beyond 10 MB, um, they are not going to release this application. So there's this, uh, there's this uh, rule in, even in Flipkart, for example, they use 10 MB. Even if you download the Flipkart app today, it's 10 MB, not more than that. Um, so they don't release the application to the Play Store or the App Store. So you have to set such checklist or have such parameters for you to make sure that you are not exceeding the limit because more and more things that we add, it is prone to failure or prone to performance issues that we saw. Um, during the design phase, you have to think about the transitions, how it's going to look like, the screens and the objects, how are you going to, how are you going to uh, map, match the screen versus the activity lifecycle? Because most of the apps that I see that they either cramp in a lot of things in one activity or they have too many activities that are not, uh, that are not the way supposed to be designed. And there are certain guidelines by Apple and Google with respect to how you can uh, build the application to make sure that it's actually performance friendly and not uh, just because you can, you can write the code, we just write it and leave it off, right? Uh, during the dev, you have to think about what are the SDKs that you're using. Um, there are some apps that are actually using more SDKs than it's necessary. And they either, either upgrade the SDKs or they actually remove the SDKs. So which is staying inside of the application forever. Making some unnecessary calls, which is adding up to your launch times and load times. And how is the lifecycle management? How is the loading and scrolling that's, that needs to be thought through? How is the image loading when you're scrolling and things like that? How are the background and foreground tasks that needs to be managed? What are the API calls? How is the API optimized? So you can ask these questions to the developers uh, to understand more about, you know, how is the app designed? Even if you are at a very uh, growth stage, let's say you're talking about apps that are already have 10 million downloads and, uh, uh, and it's there on the Play Store, you can still go and ask them what's happening with respect to the application. How is the, how's the architecture looking like? What are the areas that is optimized? What are the areas of problems that users are actually complaining and etc. Um, and uh, during the test, you can use the developer options, Android Studio, and then you can also look at app size, monitor the app size uh, while you're testing. And then you can also use the Xcode. Uh, so the way it works is you're doing 80% or 90% functional. You're spending about 10% of your time for performance. And that 10% makes a huge difference when it comes to how you have to optimize your app performance. Um, and then it's important that you educate your team and your developing developer team and uh, probably your uh, even product manager uh, of how the how this is important for them to look at performance. Probably have a sprint only to maximize or uh, bring in performance sprint to, to just fix the performance issues that are there that are reported by the users. So uh, like there, like like I mentioned, this is the Place to identify the performance issue and not in the live. So we don't react to what's happening with live. We have to be proactively start looking at app performances and there are um, and how do we monitor app performance uh, over the course and how we look at um, the way that performance needs to be monitored. 